I'm going to pack up and head out and make good use of the day. I think I might... I don't know where I'm taking you yet. Part of me just wants to get... One thing I want to do is I don't want to burn all day just wandering around. I want to get to a nice camp. I like setting up a camp. Um, I love the ability of just doing a quick camp. That's why the Go Fast Camper is awesome. Um, but I also like getting to camp, deploying the awning, having it all set up, and then just being able to like, you know, chill out for a while. Sip on some wine or whiskey. Uh, so I, I'm going to do that because that's what I really need to do this trip. It's a bit of that, but also a little exploring. Wood is pretty scarce out here. It's kind of whatever you whatever you have is or whatever you have access to is what you brought. So I'm gonna go ahead and you know there's a few this piece here partially burned, but there's still good stuff there. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that. A um, couple scraps of kindling. I really like this portable <clears throat> fire fire pit here from Camping Moon. My brother got it for me for Christmas, I think, or a birthday. I get a lot of cool gifts from my brother, um, uh, and this is this is one of them. I think you can get these on Amazon, Amazon, and I think they're pretty affordable. But um, I really like it, and I all, I just keep it in my truck all the time. But one thing that's nice is you don't have to take your, as long as you don't have like huge heavy bedding or extra pads, you can leave it up in the camper. Just kind of keep it in the center. My pillow is pretty lofty, so I'll probably take that out. Um, and then of course, lanterns and whatnot. Those all need to come out. So I'm just going to leave it up there to get this tent door down. Get the air out. That's what you do is you kind of like squeeze the air out, get most of it out, and then you open it back up a little bit, gather your stuff here. Pull your sides in. I may have just demonstrated this in other videos, but no harm in showing it again. Then you just pull the pins and lock the latches in. The same on this side. All ready to go. I'm not that kind of man. I like to get most of my summertime exploring done in the early hours of the day. Rugged terrain, in the heat, and the AC on, it really works the truck hard. So whenever possible, I like to get most of my exploring done by 1 or 2 in the afternoon. This is a 
slightly better view of that stone corral that we drove in to last night. Um, now it's in the daylight, but yeah, there it is. Don't know how old it is, but I can tell you it's at least 20 years old. see behind my shoulder there, that little peak I want to see if I can get over there now up ahead it dips down and then there's a few roads that head back that direction so I'm gonna to try to do that and we will see if we can get close this area of Oregon is known as the Oregon Outback it has miles upon miles of roads that could be linked together to make an incredible adventure route So I just passed Wind Hollow, that junction, but there was really nothing out there. I was hoping, when I looked at that, it looked like that's definitely the thing that's gonna take me over there, but. Exactly where I'm at. Well, I know where I'm at. I'm right here. But in terms of the map, my uh, GPS, if I'm zoomed all the way in, it shows these roads. If I zoom out once, it the roads disappear. Um, so I don't know if I should keep following this road and just see where it intersects. Um, or I just need to track on my GPS and figure out what's the best course of action. Turn around, go back the way I came, or keep keep going and see where it, it dumps out. I know where I want to end up tonight, but um, I'm good with finding a different way to get there. So I've decided that since I left my atlas at home, and since I didn't download a map big enough to cover this area right where I'm at and looking ahead at my GPS it turns into a mess of roads and what I found is that I was looking at roads on my on my uh, navigation on my on my truck and I'm like oh I'm gonna go that way and when I get there there's no road so I'm just striking out with these side roads so what I'm gonna do is just turn around, go back the way I came. I think I'll go to that High Rock Reservoir. I'll explore that road. And then I'll probably make my way to set up camp because I'm getting hungry and it's about 10 o'clock. I don't know why I'm hungry, but I am. So that's the plan. Called Cooper Spring Road. It's 
little bit different than other areas. It's pretty rocky. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a spring or how far it goes, but I'm still trying to find that rock. This may be the end of the road. I'm not really sure. The GPS says it goes forward, but. So this was like Cooper Spring Road. Um, so I followed it. And this is where it led. Just looks like a little meadow. Very green. This would be a spring feeding this. Out in the desert i'll walk it a little bit and see what we uh what we can see it's like there might be some tracks through here so it goes up there i don't know if i have any interest in that so i might just come in here and turn around make my way back nice little drive I really didn't want to tear up this meadow by taking an 8-ton truck through it, and I didn't really want to get stuck either. A lot of times when you randomly choose a point of interest or destination to go explore, you don't actually get there, and you have to be okay with it. It's all part of the experience. That's my camp for the night. The spot I usually like to camp at, which is just kind of behind this one, it's actually just back over there. It uh, <clears throat> it was really overgrown. Everything, we've had so much moisture this year that, man, the grass is so tall. There's flowers everywhere. There's not so many flowers here, but there's a few. And then these just super tall weeds. Um, had taken over where I normally like to post up, but uh, I might still have a fire in there tonight uh, because there's not really a good spot back there. Uh, but anyway, be a nice, nice place. I might get my shoes on and I don't know, I might go hike around a little bit. Although it is very much snake season, including rattlesnakes. And uh, I just don't like to press my luck. All right, all right, all right. Now for the video that I was going to shoot. Uh, did shoot, but uh, it failed. I failed because I pushed stop instead of record or whatever. Anyway, so back to it. I subscribe to Bespoke Post, so every month they send you something. When you sign up, it's for, you pick categories, and mine are always outdoor-related categories. Now, I used to, you can swap boxes, they show you what it is, and they, then if you don't like it, you can trade it for a different box. But about six months ago, well, geez, probably eight months ago, I stopped paying attention. It was like Christmas, every month. What shows up? You know, I don't know. And I got some cool stuff and I've got some, you know, eh, just okay stuff. But anyway, this is what came this month. An orange box. It's plastic. I'm just kidding, there's more than that. It, this did come, but it's what's inside the box. So let's take a look. Open this thing up, it's like an orange ammo can. Um, a book. Surviving the Great Outdoors by Brendan Leonard. Uh, Brendan Leonard is a really funny guy, and he does some podcasts, and uh, he's also an author. So that's pretty cool. I'm sure I'll enjoy that. 
Uh, let's see here, I got a knife. I've got several knives from Bespoke Post. This is like a hunting knife. It's got a gut hook on there. It's from Rill, Rill, R-I-L-L, -L, Simple Tools. So, all right, not bad. I've got, I like knives. Can never have too many. Um, this paracord kind of survival bracelet. Hmm. Let's see if it would fit around my wrist. It does. Look at that. Put that on. All right. Look at that. Look, I'm ready. I'm ready to survive. And uh, a commando wire saw. So it's got some uh, stainless steel wire and uh, some nylon hand straps. The uh, uh, anyway, so that's it. That's the in the box. Not too bad. Uh, cool. I can't wait to get into that. I might start reading that tonight. Actually. So I would say this box is a win. It's a win when mosquitoes are out. Uh, when it uh, exceeds the fifty bucks a month or whatever it is that you pay, when the value of it exceeds it. We're probably close on that one, but anyway. Looks like there might be a little rain coming, but I don't... Actually, maybe it's going the other way. Yeah, I think it's going to go the other way. I'm safe, I think. For reference, I camped... secret, well, one of the secrets to camping alone and exploring alone is, <coughs> and, <coughs> and it's all pretty simple if you get those two things nailed down. Well, I was going to take a shower, sort of, show you how I do this thing. So I thread this into there and then I pump air into this tank. my camp on this hilltop is a good choice. <laughs> Fly, get away from my wine.
wind had started to come through and lift the awning up, so. Oh, I figure I better anchor it down. Been through that before. Now we wait. Maybe drink some whiskey. Things gotta hold. <laughs> Thunder. I saw the flash of lightning out there and then kaboom. Well, I'm bored. Just sitting back here. Nothing to do. I could go get my iPad. And get up to 145 pounds, which is about the size of a St. Bernard. They have webbed toes and fun fact, they eat their own poop. Stop raining for a second, so I'm gonna go get a snack. Clean, partially clean. I got two different kinds of jerky, and we were coconut rolls. And after I so, I need to be smart here. And these storms keep stacking up. And this another wave, another wave is coming through. And I just watched lightning hit that hill just over there. Well, I'll show you. Well, I'll show you in a second, but. I'm on top of a hill. And I'm just a chunk of metal up here. And I'm thinking maybe I need to head for lower ground yeah, which means I have to st put everything away. I need to make this decision carefully. Absolute insanity. 
weather-wise. I'm just, I, I packed everything up. It's coming down in buckets. It's time to just get out of here. It's getting, getting bad. Plus, it can get so muddy. So, here we go. Oh, there's some crazy lightning out there. I beat the water, but it's coming. It's kind of like flash flood. Here it comes. Oh, it's crazy out. Look at that. I was up there and it, the water is now just coming down. Nuts, I raced it out. Man. It sucks that I need to leave. Such a pretty place with the storm. a little bit, but I'm gonna be turning back into it. It's bouncing all over the place. Sorry about that. This thunder, there's a couple of times the lightning lightning flashes and then all of a sudden even driving with all the road the road the noise of the gravel road my defroster full blast windshield wipers rain on the windshield it was kaboom just shaking the truck I'm like holy crap this is nuts and that was all heading over to where I was camped so This is 100 